Hello to all those who are interested in the flow of forces, who are curious about the way different type of structures are designed, who want to know the arrangement of structural members in a building so that all the foreseeable forces can be safely transferred to the ground. Today I am going to discuss the structural system employed for a stadium. The unique thing about the structural system of stadiums is that the roof needs to be supported in such a way so that all the spectators can enjoy the game with unobstructed view. This means that you cannot provide a column on the edge of the roof that is facing pitch. You need to be imaginative. This, this is a 25,000 capacity football stadium. I will look at its structural system from two perspectives, gravity and lateral loads. Let's see how the roof of this stadium is supported without the use of column that passes through spectators as seen in some of the cricket stadiums in the subcontinent or maybe some, some of the older stadiums. Observe this picture and notice how the roof and the steps are supported to transfer the gravity loads. See this picture as well. Let me show you the elevation of the typical structural scheme to support the gravity loads of this stadium. This is the typical arrangement of structural members to support the load of spectators and the roof. Let's start from the roof. Let me draw the free body diagram of roof. Before I do that, it is better to label the nodes. Let me let me grab the drawing tool. Let me label it as A. Let me put B on this joint. This would be my C. I can label this joint as D. This joint can be my E. This is F and this is G. Okay, let me draw the free body diagram of this sub assembly of the structural system. Let me change the color of the drawing too. Okay, this is the this is the roof beam. Here we go. Okay. My labeling is now complete. Uh, you can see on the left side, I have drawn a free body diagram of the sub assembly of roof. These are all the members which are directly supporting the roof beams the roof is supported with the help of a team effort of seven members four of them are in tension while the three of them are in compression members one two five and six these are in tension while members three four and seven are in compression the member three is comprised of two members bd and dg i have labeled it as a single member 3 because the origin of force is is the same from point b most of it compression members are in pair of circular tubes uh, they are circular cross sections cir circular tubular cross sections while tension members are comprised of a pair of rods at points f and g rc members collect the load and transfers them to the foundation spectators is transferred to the rc columns and rc struts through the inclined RC beam. These RC columns transfer the loads to the foundation. For the spectators, the load distrib the distribution of loads is pretty pretty straightforward. Now I will get back to the actual pictures uh, from the side where you can see all these uh, structural members again and compare them with what ha has been presented in this in this particular uh picture let's move forward and see those pictures 
The members responsible for channeling the flow of gravity related forces have been labeled in this picture. These components are assigned the same labels as in the diagram shown earlier for the comparison purposes. Please ignore all other members in the structural steel visible in this picture. They are not part of the structural scheme responsible for gravity loads. I will come to them shortly. Let's talk about the arrangement of members to transfer lateral loads. Starting with the roof, each bay of the stadium has cross bracing as shown here in this diagram. The bay here refers to the space between two primary roof beams. These roof bracing members placed in the plan of roof transfer the wind or seismic forces to the vertical bracing. Moving on to the vertical bracing of this stadium, the sketch presented here shows the arrangement and placement of vertical bracing in each bay. The cross bracing in the vertical plane located above the level of roof lends out of plane stiffness to the part of compression member 3 discussed in the earlier pictures protruding above the roof. The two levels of vertical bracing below the roof carry the forces transferred by the bracing 1 as well as the horizontal bracing in the plane of roof. Now let's, let's see these bracings in this actual structure. Here you can see the bracing 1 has been labeled. The bracing 1 is the bracing which is uh, laterally supporting uh, the part of compression member that is uh, projecting out of the level of the roof. Here you can also see the roof bracing, bracing 2 and bracing 3. Bracing 1, bracing 2, bracing 3, all of these bracings collect the forces, the lateral forces and transfer them to the RCC structure uh, located at the first level. Okay, there are some more bracings here in this picture that I haven't touched upon. This is because they are not part of the, uh, the lateral system which is uh, providing stiffness to the roof. These are the bracings meant for the stepped slab. Let's, for the lateral structural scheme of stepped slab, let's take a look at these pictures. As you might have noticed, only alternate bays are braced to channel the lateral forces originating from the stepped slab. In addition to the cross bracing, struts and V-shaped braces are also provided to safely transfer the forces to the foundation. All of these components are labeled here in this diagram. The V-shaped brace at the lowest most level does not provide stiffness to the stepped slab. Uh, it is meant for the outermost RCC frame lying at the lowest most level. With that, I conclude my analysis of the structural scheme and I hope that you find it useful. Take care.